sure Sheila Walsh is an international speaker, plus a best-selling author and a popular recording artist. But on the CBN campus, she's known as a former co-host of the 700 Club. And now she's about to start a new phase of her life. Take a look. For the past 20 years, best-selling author Sheila Walsh had been part of the Women of Faith team speaking to audiences across America. When this chapter of her life ended last year, she wondered what was next. I really began to pray and, and make, I mean, a consistent, intentional prayer. You know, what do you want me to do with the rest of my life? She says the answer was very clear. Sheila is now a part of Life Outreach and Life Today and Life Today family. I have a real job. Yes, you've got a real job. This new season in Sheila's life also includes the release of her latest book, The Longing in Me, in which she shares that God is the answer to our heartbreak, no matter how broken we may be. Please welcome back to the 700 Club, our friend Sheila Walsh. It's always great to have Hi, you Terry. here. Hi, Terry. It's great to see you. And you are such a prolific writer, girl. I mean, I don't Honestly, know where you fit that in <laughs> to the rest of your it's life. It's what I love to do, though. Yeah. I mean, I'm always writing. I don't, fortunately, I don't publish everything I write. <laughs> You're welcome. But I'm, I just, I love that. I love to study. I love to dive deep. And I, I love to write. Well, diving deep is what you do in everything that you write, helping us to get in touch with our feelings, and usually the struggles of our life. This last book, which is so beautiful, is called The Longing in Me. What are you looking for when you talk about the longing in you? You know, I had this experience in an arena with women of faith, 15,000 women worshiping the Lord. And my husband was there, my son was there. Really the best days of my life, but I felt this profound ache inside, mm. like a real I didn't know what it was. And I said, Lord, what's wrong with me? I mean, these are, I'm in a beautiful place. And I began to understand that this is not something to be despised. Yeah. I think it's actually a sacred ache. I yeah. think it's, it's something that tells us we're not home yet. Yeah. And I think we try, the trouble is that most of us feel it and we try and fill it up with another pair of shoes or another drink or another relationship. Party. Right. But honestly, there's a place inside that only Christ can fill. Mm -hmm. And it's not a one-time filling. I mean, just as you're talking, you've known the Lord for years. You've worked in, in all areas of, of Christianese. But that longing, that aching is with us, I think, till we go be with him, don't you? I absolutely agree. I absolutely agree. I think it's the only time that that longing will go away is when we finally see Jesus face yeah. to face and then yeah. it'll be gone. But the trouble is because we feel that we're believers, we shouldn't feel like this. We try and fill it and we, yeah. and we chase stuff and we chase people. And, and rather, I think now, no. Yeah acknowledge that place, honor that place, yeah. and realize that this is a little, it's part of our ticket that says we're going home soon. Even in all the things that you mentioned that we try to fill that ache with, part of what we're doing is trying to control life, control what it does to us, how we respond to it, what it takes from us, what it requires of us. Is there a longing for control that is in all of us to some degree? I think it might even be more in women than in men, yeah. to be honest. Yeah. And I think part I of think it comes... I think most men would agree with that. <laughs> <laughs> part of it comes from a good place. You know, yeah. we want things to be well with our husbands and mm -hmm. well with our children. But I think it can really cross a line. Yeah. And then, you know, when we can't control and we can't make people behave properly, you know, we either <laughs> over-spiritualize <laughs> it or we, you know, or we punish, we withdraw. Yeah. And one of the things, one of the main things I wanted to say through this book is that... Um, God is for you. Yeah. No matter what place you're at in life, God is for you. And your history does not dictate your destiny. Yeah. That's one of the biggest lessons yeah. I've learned because sometimes we start in really bad yeah. places. And even up until you know recently, you could be in a bad place. That does not determine where you're going. And the great thing is he'll even take the yeah. bad and work it to good for you and for other people. Um, what are some of the other things that we long for in our lives? I mean, control is certainly one of them, but maybe intimacy? To... Yeah, I think we long for, we long to be loved. I mean, I think mm -hmm. it's the most primal desire of every human being to yeah. be fully known and fully loved. And yeah. yet it's scary. And I think one of the places it's most scary is in the church. Yeah. That shouldn't be that. Mm -hmm. One of the reasons, Terry, that I tend to be very open about my life Part of it comes from what Paul wrote in 1 Thessalonians. He said, I've determined among you to share not only the gospel, but my very soul. Mm -hmm. I think we need to be transparent yeah. with each other on our journeys because then shame comes in. You know, yeah. if you fail, you make a mistake, 
you think, I'm just a terrible person, I'm a mm -hmm. terrible Christian, not knowing that 53 other people around you are going yeah. through exactly the same thing. Yeah. Well, and I think that that is sometimes why the church is so difficult to be honest with, yeah. because when God gave us boundaries to keep us in safe pasture, we've made it a judgmental issue. You went through a divorce a number of years ago and um, never really talked about it, which is totally understandable and commendable. But now you've come forward in the book and shared some of that experience from your perspective. Why did you decide to do that? Well, I waited a long time. It's been over 20 years, yeah. um, 25 years, because I thought one person can never represent what was true for two people. Yeah. Sure. And the other thing I felt was as long as you're still angry about something or desperately sad about something, mm -hmm. I don't think you have perspective enough yeah. to be able to speak into it. But I felt I'd come to the place in my own life where I understood my part of the journey. Mm -hmm. I think sometimes if you've had something broken in your childhood, you almost want to recreate that scenario, hoping for a different ending. Yeah. We have such a desperate desire for closure. And so I felt without putting things in that would be detrimental to my ex-husband or his family, I wanted to explain to other women, listen, I understand. Mm -hmm. It was like when my cousin, who had been very abused by her dad and watched her dad abuse her mom, then went and married a guy who abused her. And I'm like, yeah. why do you do that? But I yeah. think, I understand. We think, again, it's control. Maybe this time mm -hmm. I can have a different ending. Yeah. You know, I think it, the honesty is such a significant thing in what you write. And you do that in all of your books because when we're honest about who we are, we give other people the freedom to be honest about who they are. You're going through a tough time now. Someone could look at your life and say, she's got this all together. But you and Barry are struggling right now. Share a little bit about that. You know, it's so interesting, Terry. I, I don't think anybody would ever look at me and think she's got it all together because oh, I've, yes, I've got it all out there. <laughs> well, you know, it's, we went through a time where we, we bought a home, beautiful home, and then we decided to sell because we felt it wasn't a neighborhood that was safe for our son. It was little at the time. And the housing market in Dallas was phenomenal. So we found another house and we signed on that before we had a contract on our yeah. other house, but people before people do that all the time. I, well, don't do it, people. <laughs> before the ink was dry, the bottom yeah. fell out the housing market, and the contract fell away. So we carried two mortgages for five Ouch. years, and then made some, also some really poor financial decisions. So last year we had to file for bankruptcy. Mm. And you know, but you know what? Here's what's great, honestly, Sarah. You can discover the mercy of God in the most unusual places. Yeah. I mean, I had to go as this woman of faith speaker and I'm standing in bankruptcy court and yeah. the judge is saying to me, so are you just hoping to get out of all of this? And I said, no, sir, I'm looking for a plan to help me reorganize our life so we can pay back yeah. every cent. Mm -hmm. I found the mercy of God yeah. in a bankruptcy There's court. There's a certain freedom in that too, isn't yes. there? When nothing, nothing has its claws right. in you, not a house, not a mortgage, right. not a bankruptcy. Yeah. I mean, you're a child of God Absolutely. and you're walking the journey day to day. Yeah, I mean, we, we lost our house. We, you know, had to, both houses gone. We live in a rental place and I'm happier than I've been in years. Yeah. And I want to, I, the reason I wrote about it, it's not because I think I'm the poster child for disaster. <laughs> Woo! No, I just want to say to people, you know what? It, you're not alone. You can make we all it. We make bad choices, but God is faithful. Yeah. Mm. And speaking of faith, you were with Women of Faith for so many years, a wonderful team of women that blessed thousands upon thousands of people. But you got a new venture coming. That, one, that door has closed and a new one has opened. What are you doing now? I'm so excited. I joined the team with James and Betty Robeson at Life Today. So I get to co-host that. I also get to travel with them internationally. I'm about oh, to go off to wonderful. Angola. Um, and also we have this live amazing um, web page called The Stream. And then we get to, to talk about the news as it really is yeah. and wow. talk about what's not been talked about out there. I'm so. so glad that you're doing that because you are so gifted in what you do as a communicator. Thank and you. what a wonderful opportunity to share what God's laid on your heart and the things that he's doing in your life, which is something you do all the time. And can I just say to you, you do a brilliant job. You are just amazing. Thank you. We'll have coffee together. <laughs> <laughs> talk about our failings. <laughs> it's always great to have you here. I just want to talk about your book one more time. Here it is. I encourage you to pick up a, co a copy. It's called The Longing in Me, and you will be blessed by everything that Sheila shares in this. It's how everything you crave leads to the heart of God. It's available in stores nationwide.
Thank you so much. Thanks, it's always Terry. a treat to see you.